The next thing, and the greatest thing is, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His help. There is no deed in this world that we can do, there is nothing we can do in this world without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And next, as the scholars say, and also um, doctors recommend, to increase exercise. Working out, basketball, sports, whatever it takes, because now a person has this intensity inside him, he has this tension on him, he has this energy in him that needs to be released. The best way of doing it is go and indulge in sports. Go and play sports. Go and have a nice time, go play basketball, go and go weight lift, whatever it takes, take out that energy, take out that stress. By releasing that stress, by releasing that energy, it will make it easier on you to control your desires. So the next thing scholars advise is that, um, that, advise that people, um, that, that increase, um, um, increase um, um, exercise. And, and, and the next thing is that set, um, set, set goals for yourself. Okay, for example, now someone who is extremely indulged in the sin, he knows that you know, every night I commit the sin. Okay, or every Friday night I commit the sin. Many people they commit on the weekend. People commit sins on the weekend because they're free. They have nothing better to do. On the weekdays they're busy. They don't have time for these things. When a person's free on the weekend, he makes a whole plan. You know what? I'm going to go to my room at 10 o'clock at night, turn my phone off, tell my mom that I'm going to sleep, I'm going to be in my room for three hours, and I can do whatever I want to. So he's planning it out. He planned the sin. Whenever we do a sin, we always plan it. That I'm going to do it like this, I'm going to do it like this, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to plan the sin. Okay, I'm going to go with my friends to go chill right now, we might end up going doing, we might, you, know, you know that there's a chance that you might end up doing drugs, so then we plan it, you know? Okay, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, because these guys are going to be here. These are the cars that are going to come, this is the place we're going to meet. Tell my mom and dad that I'm going to auntie's house for, you know, for some dal chawal. So we always plan everything out very, you know, strategic. So now when a person is taking on this task of giving up the sin of masturbation, he has to also plan it out strategically. Then how am I going to do it? Okay, if I do it daily or bi-weekly, I do it twice a week, every day, once a week, I have to cut off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that from two, from instead of doing it once a week, I'm going to do it once in two weeks. He's still committing the sin, but he has to give himself some goals. If a person just tries to give up altogether, that's very good. If a person can do that, that's awesome. But if he can, at least, as a beginner, give yourself some goals. That you know what, I'm going to stop on him. You know, I do it twice a week, make yourself a calendar. That okay, you know that this is the day that... You, you know, a person can easily map out the days and the times we sin. It's really easy. Okay, the times I sin is, for example, this time of the day, this time of the week, this is the time when I usually commit the sin. Okay, or when I do these things. For example, I watch a movie, after I watch an American movie or a Desi movie or some, you know, Chinese movie, I get really excited. <laughs> and I'm gonna... I'm prone to commit the sin. The chances are very high that I'm gonna commit the sin. So now when he does it after he watches that movie, first of all, he shouldn't watch the movie altogether. But if by chance he does end up doing that, and he knows that the chances are very high right now that he's going to commit the sin, he should first immediately get into his tiqwa. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, oh Allah, help, oh Allah, help. Start praying to Allah, immediately. And then now he knows that it's usually a Friday night sin. It's usually a Saturday night sin. So now when he goes to his room, he should be begging Allah, oh Allah, please, oh Allah, please. This is the time I commit the sin every single week, oh Allah, I need your help now. Okay? Or every night after Isha Salat, after he prays, after he's done praying his witr, everything, he goes to bed and he knows he commits a sin then. So this is the time where you become extra precautious. Oh Allah, I need your help. Oh Allah, I can't commit sin. Oh Allah, help, 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 help. Where he prays to Allah and begs Allah for the mercy of Allah. So when this time comes, a person should first of all secure himself. Meaning that he should pray to Allah, beg Allah, do whatever it takes. Because this is the time when a person commits a sin. So you have to plan it strategically. The next thing is that a person should make a calendar. Okay, a pocket calendar, a phone calendar, uh, a room calendar. Well, the, room, the days in which we commit the sin, we color in that day. Shade in the day. So at the end of the month, you actually have an account of yourself. That you know what? In this month, I did it 10 times. I'm going to cut down to 9. Okay? After the 9, I'm going to cut down to 8. After 8, I'm going to cut down to 7. So he has a track of himself. Sometimes you commit this sin 20 times a month, or even 30, or even 60 times a month. And we don't even know about it. We don't realize that we committed this sin, this grave sin, 60 times this month. But by having a track in front of us, we can see that yes, I committed this sin 60 times this month. So gauging and looking at how often we commit the sin and preparing ourselves for the times in which we commit the sin. Okay? And then finally, two more things. First of all, um, uh, we've already actually mentioned the last one, figure out times and conditions. And the last thing is that the scholars say is the person should attend the masjid. He should attend the salat with jama'ah. Come to the masjid and pray salat with jama'ah. Okay? Make a habit of praying salat in congregation. Whatever it takes, do it. Whatever it takes, do it. Be sure that you attend salat with jamaat. If you're on this pathway and you want to end up, you want to give up on this bad habit, this is what we do. The first thing we do is we give up. We, we, we make an intention that every one of our salats will be with jamaat to the best of our ability. And the second thing is we should go to a local scholar or a knowledgeable person and ask him to teach us a book. 
Ask him to teach us a book of hadith, a book of fiqh. Ask him to listen to our Qur'an. You know, become a student of deen. Because by becoming a student of deen, you begin to build a guilt. Say, you know what? I give so much sacrifice for learning the hadith. I've learned so many hadith off by heart. I've learned so much of the Qur'an off by heart. I'm studying the Qur'an vigorously day and night. I should feel shameful of myself. What am I doing? So that guilt is what takes many people out of sin. Many times people give up on sin because of guilt. So being yourself in a position where you are studying. Become a student. Go to study by a shaykh every day. Go to study by a scholar every day. After Fajr, take some time off. Even if you can't go in person, ask them, can I call you? You know, from 10 o'clock to 10.15, if, you can just, if I can study a hadith by you, if I can recite one hadith to you a day, or recite one, 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 a, few, a few lines of the Qur'an every day to you, make a habit of being in, connect, in connection with the scholars. And if you, can, if you can't be with the scholars, at least with a friend. Make a habit. You know, you know after Isha every day, we're going to sit down together, and we're going to recite, you know, you recite one surah to me, I'll recite one surah to you. Become a student of deen. This is what will help us do. And then, um, um, regarding um, praying salat with jama'at, how this will help give up on the sin. Um, um, during the time of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anh, there was a lady. She narrates the incident that there was this person that would go to the masjid. On the way to the masjid, she used to live close to the masjid. So on the way there, this person would look at her. So one day this person, he couldn't control himself anymore. So he came to the lady and he said to her that, I wish to commit adultery with you. So the lady said, okay, I'm ready to commit adultery with you. But my condition is, that I will only commit adultery with you after you pray 40 days of salat behind Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh. Pray 40 days salat with jama'at with him and then if you come, I'll commit adultery with you. She says that five days pass by, instead of looking at her and staring at her, he only took quick glances at her. 10-15 days pass by, this guy was not looking down and walking. And 40 days pass by, she said, I went to the person and I said to him, are you ready? He started crying and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy. And saying, oh Allah, save me from, this, from, from, the, from the traps of shaitan. An nisa wa haba'il shaitan. So this is what happens to a person, the one person that becomes punctual of praying salah. So this lady came to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh, and she said to Umar radiallahu anh, that this is what happened, why did it happen? Why did this guy make such a big change in his life after praying his 40 salahs behind you, continuously with jama'ah? Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh said to her, do you not see the verse of the Qur'an, utru ma'u uhiya ilayka min al-kitab wa aqim salah inna salat tanha al fahshai wa al-munkar. That recited the Qur'an and established the prayer. Indeed salat, indeed the prayer, it prevents a person from immoral things from munkar and from sins. akbar and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest thing. So these are the three things we engage in the recitation of the Quran. We engage in salat with jama'at. And the third thing is we, uh, we spend every moment of ours in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the things that inshallah will help us overcome this sin. We have one portion left, the part of adultery. Um, the second sin that many of the youth um, commit um, in order to fulfill their desire. But inshallah we'll leave this for next week. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants all the ability to stay away from the sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And in the, the narration that I narrated, uh, I just remember the last part of the hadith that, I, um, that slipped my mind. Hassan bin Afra radiallahu anhu. He narrates the hadith that there are seven people on the day of judgment. They will come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will be standing there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let them stand with the knowledge of the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw them in the fire of hell without any reckoning, without any hisab kitab. At the end of the narration, he says, that unless these people repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rule of Allah is, أَتَّائِبُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِكَ مَنْ لَا ذَنْبَرَ The one who repents from a sin is like the one who, doesn't have, who has no sin at all. So this repentance is the key. So when we take on this pathway of, you know, moving ourselves away from the sin and defeating this desire and coming out of this well, the first thing we have to do is repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be determined. Cut off all the avenues that can ever lead us to the sin again. If that sin is usually committed because of the phone, that the internet, free internet we have on our phone, call up your service provider and tell them to cancel your internet. You may have a little bit more difficulty in life, but at least in the hereafter life will become easier for you. If it's because of the laptop that's usually in our room, because of this laptop we commit sins at night time, keep that laptop outside the room. Only use the computer inside, inside the living room. And as you mentioned before, and I say this with firm belief, that majority of the, majority of the time these sins are committed because of having um, uh, ha- having exclusive access to laptops, to TVs, to, 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 to cable, to having, a- to having exclusive access to, you know, to you know, unlimited, uh, unlimited channels, having access to internet on the phone. These things, when we have access to these things in privacy, this is the time when we commit these sins. So if this means that we only use our computer and laptop in the living room where our mom and dad are present, then that's where, we're, then that's where we're gonna use it. Probably maybe a little bit more inconvenient. We we'll hear people walking around making noise. Put some earplugs in ears. A person that wants to find a way around it, he can find his way. But we have to save ourselves from coming into sin. Whatever it takes. This will be the hardest task. But every person sitting here right now should pray to Allah that inshallah we will take on this task. No matter how difficult the journey is, 
we will stand up and we will take on this journey. And inshallah, we will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be looking at us in question. We will be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day, standing in the group of the knowledgeable people. And we will be standing in front of Allah on the day, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take our hisab kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold us responsible for our deeds. But He will not throw us in the fire of hell, He will throw us into the, he, will, he will enter us into paradise. Inshallah, Allah Aziz. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, Allah, 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 Is it easy?